Yes. Okay. So Snow and Charming remember each other now. How is that going to change for the show? Uh, well, I think it changes. The, uh, it changes for every character in the show because you know, magic. The curse has been lifted. Magic has come to Storybrooke. Uh, he remembers his old life, his old memories, his old emotions. He remembers who he is at the core, uh, which I think has always been fighting to come out of David. And because of the curse, it just was. It was never possible. Uh, you know, Charming will remember everything about David and remember everything that David went through and remember that David hurt the woman that he loved and, and, and that, that won't ever leave him. David is dead, Charming is back, and Regina has a lot to answer for. <laughs> How does he feel towards Emma now? Well, this is, I mean, he's, this is one thing that I'm really, really looking forward to and exploring in, in the whole of this uh, this next season is that family dynamic with his daughter, you know, she's grown. He missed out on her entire childhood. He has a grandson. He's got that, you know, he's never been a parent before. He never had that opportunity. So he's got that to deal with and he's got Regina to deal with. Um, I had asked this prior, but I, if, if indeed, with the with the coming of Captain Hook, there's a consortium of evil. Yeah. Uh, you know, would how would you be really excited to do sort of a massive fight scene in the middle of Storybook sort of Square? Of course, <laughs> I'm always I would always be excited about a big fight scene. You know, I, I, it's like a boy's dream. You know, doing this job. You know, I get to ride horses. I get to wield a sword, I get to slay dragons, so it's it's a boy's dream. So yeah, I would, t I would totally be up for that. Are there any additional villains that you would very much like to, to kind of face off against? Uh, yeah, all of them. You know, all of them. You know, Charm Charming is, is, has a great moral compass and is, is all for the uh, uh, greater good of, of mankind and, and, and the every man. So he's going to do. He would he would gladly face off against anyone because you know the thing. Charming may not have any magic, but he has he has um, he has honor and he has bravery and he has that. So he he'll 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 square off he'll square off the anyone. How much sword play do you actually have to train for? Uh, well, I do it all. I do all my sword work in the show, which is it's something that I really love to do. And, you know, I trained, you know, early on as an actor, and that was certainly something that I trained in, and, and it kind of uh, crosses over into into the show. And we have a stunt coordinator that, you know, choreographs certain things. So, you know, if you're shooting, uh, a, a, you know, a fight scene like that, you're going to rehearse, on a TV show, you're going to rehearse for a day, and then you're shooting it, you know, the next day or the day after that for three hours or whatever. If you're on a movie set, you're probably going to rehearse for weeks and then shoot for weeks. But, uh, yeah, I love it. Did you have favorite fairy tales when you were a little boy? Uh, well, the, the first one I remember is, is Pinocchio, and that was always kind of my favorite. Um, and then I kind of slowly, I, I slowly got into them as I got over. I was a huge fan of Winnie the Pooh and stuff like that, but that's, I guess that's not really a fairy tale. The books are the ones that we need. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you know, I think Pinocchio was a favorite of mine, um, and I and I think I came to them later on in life. Like Snow White, I came to later on. I just saw it for the first time on the big screen. The TMC was doing this big classic movie festival in Hollywood. And I saw that for the first time, and I think they're just they're wonderful stories to go back to. In the first season, David kind of was very indecisive, and at, at times people watching the show would get a little irritated yeah. with David. But now that he remembers he who is charming, are some of those um, irritating characteristics of David um, going to kind of disappear, or do you think that they'll kind of still stick around and incorporate into charming now and sort of? Well, I think. David is, like I said, David is gone. David is gone now. Charming is back. Charming will never, David will always live in his heart and he will know all those emotions that he went through as David and what he wasn't able to do as David because of the curse. He wasn't able to be honorable. He wasn't able to be truthful. He wasn't able to be forthright. He wasn't able to stand up for what he believes in and what he loved. And and, and, and the consequences of that, of that was that he hurt the woman that he loved. Um, but that was the curse. The curse is broken. Charming is gone. <laughs> Do you 
Uh, do you have anything from the first season that you think is like a really great moment for your character? And is there anything coming up that you really want to see happen with Charming? Um, yeah, in, in the first season, I love. I mean, there's so many moments that that I love that the boys uh, wrote. I, I love when we first went in and we saw how Snow and Charming first met, how Charming got his name, that how that love first kind of blossomed. I love uh, that that setup and that foundation of that character. And uh, you know, as far as season two goes, I just want you know I'm looking forward to exploring that family dynamic uh, between Emma and Henry and Snow, and uh, also finding out more about Snow and Charming and their background and, and more about their uh, their relationship, you know, at different points in time. Because of course, we will always go back in flashbacks and flashbacks and see more about these characters' histories. So I'm looking forward to just delving in more and and looking forward to Charming and Storybook and how that reacts because. Like I said, Regina's got a lot to answer for, and Charming's angry. <laughs> Is Charming disappointed in David for anything that he had done? Oh, of course. Of course. You know, he hurt the woman, as I said, he hurt the woman that he, he loved more than life. And, uh, of course he's disappointed, he's devastated, because it's not, because David's actions are not the actions of Charming. And uh, and that's one reason why he's so angry because that's something Regina did to him and Regina did to them in their relationship. So uh, there's some payback, I think. In the story. Um, we saw that Geppetto lied about how you know being able to put two people into the uh, the trunk to to spirit them away to safety. Do you think that uh, Charming will ever find this out? And what perhaps his reaction to that would be? It's possible. It's possible. I can't tell you if that's going to happen. I think, you know, our creators, Eddie and Adam, are geniuses, and uh, they've taken the show in so many different directions, and uh, anything's possible. Anything's possible. Thank you, Steve. Are they divorced for all yes. Uh, the, the, yes. Well, if you can remember in season one, you know they are. Uh, they kind of they came to some kind of conclusion yeah. in the relationship and realized that you know actually they weren't right for each other and it wasn't right because they could never. You know, she looks at a picture of, uh, of David and Mary Margaret and says, I want him to look at me like that. And I think they just both realized um, that they weren't meant to be, and it wasn't right. And David, of course, was trying, you know, there was charming inside of David trying to come out, and he was trying to do the right thing. He was trying to be honorable to this woman that he was supposed to be married to and have all these memories about, which were fake and planned. So he was trying to do the same thing, but I think there's been a, a nice kind of conclusion to it. Anything's possible. Anything's possible.